Hello, my name is Elena Lowry, and this is the data overview for the administration team of Tianjin International School in Tianjin, China. The purpose of this presentation is to take a closer look at the academic performance of middle school students at Tianjin International School, or TIS. This will be done through the following. We will analyze the demographic information of TIS. We will use ERB's Comprehensive Testing Program, or also known as CTP4, scores for TIS, and we will use them to compare them to suburban, public, and independent school norm groups, all these for the years of 2014 through 2016. I will present strengths and areas for improvement from observations of the data, and also from the report of the accrediting committee that came from the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, also known as WASC. I will identify the student learning problem and present possible solutions to this problem. So now let's take a look at an overview of Tianjin International School. Tianjin International School, or TIS, is a private early childhood through grade 12 international school, which serves the expatriate community in Tianjin, China. TIS is part of the International Schools Consortium along with seven other schools in China and one in the United Arab Emirates. We follow the standards from ISC, uh, which were compiled from standards from uh, schools in North America. TIS has been accredited with the Western Association Schools and Colleges since 1992. It provides a North American college preparatory curriculum at the lang and the language of instruction is in English. While TIS continues to provide a rigorous curriculum, it has recently shifted admission policies to allow students with lower English proficiency to attend the school. Data has not been systematically or consistently collected for transient students, however, the school's transiency rate is estimated to be about 20%. So now let's look at this data. This is TIS population from 2014 to 2016. Student enrollment, as you can see, has remained steady over the last three years. The 20% estimated transiency rate is consistent for both students entering the school and those leaving the school. This reflects in the numbers being similar from 2014 to 2016. Now let's take a look at TIS's student nationality. TIS students' nationality has consistently been predominantly Korean, ranging from 63% to 57% in the last three years. The other predominant nationality is in the last three years has been U.S. American, ranging between 18% to 21%. This takes us to the primary language spoken at home. The population of Tianjin International School is predominantly made up of English language learners. Over the last three years, only 19 to 23% of the students are, have been native English language speakers. This tells us that we have strategies that we need to use to meet the needs of all our students. Although most of our students have always been English language learners, traditionally TIS has only allowed students with high English proficiency level to attend our school. This has shifted in the last three years, which is reflected in the amount of students that need English language services. The population of middle school students at Tianjin International School who are identified as having low English proficiency and receive English language services has increased over the last three years. You can see there has been a big jump from 2014 to 2016. This increase of population has been consistently observed but is primarily evident in the seventh grade. It has also decreased in the eighth grade as you can observe in the orange with the orange bars. I want us to keep this in mind as we look at the performance data of our middle schoolers. So if we look at the CTP4 percent mastery of mathematics in one and two, 
we can see that the percentage of students that have shown mastery of mathematics is consistently higher compared to U.S. suburban public and independent school norm groups. I want us to notice that the biggest gaps have been um, with the seventh grade. Also, that the smaller gap seems to be here with the eighth grade, although there is a small gap also with the sixth grade. Now let's look at the percent mastery of quantitative reasoning. The TIS students consistently score higher than suburban, public, and independent norm group. However, there is a smaller gap in year 2016 between these norms and TIS students in the eighth grade. If you notice, these gaps, these differences are a little bit less between the eighth grade. I want us to pay attention to that and think about the type, the population of those grades. Another thing to think about is that quantitative reasoning section of the test deals with um, questions that are going to need more vocabulary. So now the, let's look at the percent mastery of um, verbal reasoning. TAS students in all grades are consistently at lower mastery percentages than the norm groups. This is to be expected with a large population of English language learners. There is a smaller gap, however, between TAS students and the norm group in eighth grade in 2016. There is a larger gap, however, between TIS students and the norm group in seventh grade in both year 2016 and 2014. If you remember, this is the grade level that has been most affected by the population of English language learners with low English proficiency level. So now let's look at percent mastery of vocabulary. Mastery percentages dropped significantly for grades 6 and 7 during 2006. So if you see here and here and here and here, um, these percentages dropped quite a bit. And while still below the mastery percentages of the norm groups, grade 8 remained um, somewhat constant and showed a slight increase in year 2000. 16. Again, this is the group with the least amount of English language learners at low proficiency. The CPT4 percent mastery of reading comprehension shows that the mastery percentages remain consistent throughout 2014 through 2016 with the norm groups as well as with TIS. So we can see that the norm groups and TIS are all at the same at the same proficiency level, so they all are maintaining um, the same level of mastery. We can also observe, though, that there is a small decline in all grade levels um, in the year two thousand sixteen. CTP4 percent mastery of writing mechanics shows that the difference between TIS and the norm groups is lowest in this area. This means that there is not a great difference between our school and the suburban public or independent schools. So most of these are fairly even. Uh, we can also observe a small decrease in percent mastery in grade seven and grade six. So you can see here we have 65 to 57, and here we have 57 to 53 in grade six and seven in the year 2016. While in grade eight um, has remained consistent throughout the last three years. Now, if we look at the percent mastery of writing concepts and skills, we see that this area of writing has remained consistent among all grade levels throughout years 2014, 2015, and 16. Grade 8, however, shows that it has the greatest difference between 
TIS and the students in the norm groups. This is the only time that grade 8 has not consistently shown a larger um, difference between, between our school's scores and the norm groups. So in summary, middle school students at TIS consistently outperform students from other suburban public schools and independent schools in the United States in the area of mathematics. However, this difference decreases when language is required in areas of quantitative reasoning, which involves comparison, extension, and analysis. The grade levels with the largest percentages of students in English language services show the greatest decline in percentage of mastery in various English language areas. The grade levels with the greatest percentages of students in English language services reflect the greatest differences between TIS students and the norm groups they are being compared to in the areas of verbal reasoning. Conversely, the grade levels that show fewer students in English language services reflect lower mastery percentages and lower differences between TIS students and the norm groups they are being compared to in the area of mathematics. So what do we do with this now? The accrediting committee from WAS that came to visit us in the uh, last year reported that they identified the follow area, following area of focus. They said that we should train and support classroom teachers to build skills around instructing English language learners or students with special learning needs in the classroom. Based on this report and the observations from this presentation, how are we going to build our skills to support our increasing population of English language learners at low proficiency levels? How can we further develop support and curriculum for our students that meet their needs in mathematics at every level? I hope these are questions that bring solutions to our learning problem with English language learners at low proficiency level. Thank you for listening.